get ready, New Orleans. It's time for Big Q and the Guys. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys, the best fucking sports podcast in the country. Whoa, what's happening? You're rocking with the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. And we're covering day number two of the Saints draft. The Saints made their pick at the bottom of the third round, picking up wide receiver Mr. Trey Quine Smith for Central Florida. According to NFL.com's profile of Mr. Smith, 6'2, 203 pounds, ran a 449 at the 40. And the guy's awesome, man. 2017 stats 59 receptions, 1,171 yards, almost 20 yards a catch average. So every time he catches the ball, averages almost 20 yards a reception. 13 touchdowns. That's just numbers from the 2017 season for Mr. Traquan Smith. So really solid speed, good size, can catch. Yards after the catch, the, the guys are absolutely awesome and tough. So, you know, we're going to get right into talking to it. Of course, we had the first pick of the first round dealing with the Saints. They moved up, took Marcus Davenport from UTSA. Yeah. And now, in day two, the Saints, they don't make any movements until the third round, and they land Trey Quan Smith, bringing in D.C. with me. What's up, D.C.? Oh, I'm good, man. Uh, I, I'm... I'm... A little happy about this pick, bro. We needed another receiver, and we got one. You bring in Cameron Meredith, sign him to that his chicken tender, a very spicy one, by the way. Then you back mm-hmm. it up, bringing back Brandon Coleman. It's really only it's really only worth about six million dollars. Then you, a lot of his shit is based on incentives. Now you bring in well, Mr. Traquan not as Smith. As you think. Well, you bring in Traquan Smith is spicy to a lot of people, brother. Trust me. But uh, Trey Quan Smith is a guy that Saints pick up. And uh, you know what, D.C., come to think about it, somebody had that in their draft, in their mock draft. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if somebody had it in their mock draft, but they had them taking them later on. I think on. it was one of your uh, one of your sons, huh? Didn't they, didn't they draft? Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. But let's talk about Mr. Trey Quan Smith <laughs> for this segment. Uh, of course, uh, like I said, the Saints didn't do any movements for this day they just st- sat st- with very patient Stan Pat and Traquan Smith fell to him what is I know you know something about Traquan Smith you did a little research on him tell us about uh, what's about going on with Mr. Traquan Smith looking at him before the draft man uh, it's good uh, good receiver man uh, typically has the potential to be a number two most people consider him a three or four or five guy uh, he's fast he has track speed four four guy uh, four four nine, very good hands, bro. Uh, and he, he can jump out the gym also, thirty seven inch vertical. Um, this guy knows how to shield his body away from receivers, so he's a real good deep threat. Forty one plays, uh, over twenty yards, man. That's amazing. Twenty one touchdowns, uh, thirteen touchdowns last year, and twenty one plays over uh over twenty yards. So you talking about a potential deep threat this guy averages 20 yards a catch basically 19.6 yards a catch so you 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 basically have the replacement to Ted Ginn or maybe two Ted Ginn's he's not as fast as Ted Ginn because Ted Ginn was like ridiculously fast so he might have lost a step but him losing a step is still ridiculously fast so uh he may not be faster than Ted Ginn but he's right there He's not losing by much, and he very reliable hands. Uh, so I, I'm very pleased with this pick, knowing that this is a guy that Drew Brees could take and just throw the ball up there, man, and give him a one of them them shot plays we call them, you know, where you just just throw the ball downfield and see. So we got two guys that can do that now. Plus, Ted Ginn is also able to maybe uh, return to some of his punt return duties, which I thought he was pretty solid that last year, but we needed him. More as a receiver than a punt returner, and couldn't risk getting him hurt. He's basically our number two receiver when you think about it. We're looking at some of his strengths according to some of the scouts that that uh, 
analyze Traquan Smith out of Central Florida. And some of them said that his strengths were listed as he's got a smooth accelerator with gliding strides, early acceleration to create, to create a sudden throwing window against the off man. Saw 78% of his catches go for first down. That is all absolutely awesome. Possesses rare arm length for a receiver, very long arms. Uh, flashes ball skills, uses wingspan and leaping ability to consistent win at the high point, so attacking the ball at its highest point. Once defender is stacked, he won't let them off the hook. Will He will down gear and find the proper positioning with tracking underneath deep balls. Pretty good route runner. Has the ability to make necessary in-air adjustments, can, can talk his body in strange ways to make catches. Effective use of size as a blocker, so he's a pretty decent blocker for that six one six two frame and does his right. part and does his part to impact the running game, which means he's a, a good a blocking wide receiver as well. Now some of the overview on this scouting report says that he will fight for a fourth or fifth wide receiver position uh on your on your team. Now some of the weaknesses for Traquan Smith, they say athletic press defenders can put him in early sand out of release, needs to play stronger at the top of his routes to shake harassing man coverage. Routes need more consistent play speed and better salesmanship. Despite arm length, catch radius, and consistency is disappointing. Needs to get better at finishing catches catches outside of his frame. Allow too many catchable balls to slip away against uh, Dietrich Nichols. And concentration and hand-eye can take a downturn when he's contested. So those are a few weaknesses there, but far more strengths right. than weaknesses that I see. Now they projected he's not this- a number one receiver. Those traits are usually for number one guys that you just mentioned. They projected him catching to go everything a, with huge catch radius. They projected him to go in between the fourth and fifth round, but some of the statistics on this guy is is is, is pretty awesome. American Athletic Conference, right. the AAC's uh, coaches named him the league's rookie of the year. Uh, that was back in 2015. And he caught 52 passes for 724 yards and four touchdowns on a winless team in 2015. The following year, he started all 13 games, leading Central Florida with 57 receptions for 852 yards and five touchdowns. You're seeing a theme here, huh? Yeah, I'm seeing it. The guy could play. He completed his – then he completed his career. Keeps him, he keeps improving too. Man. Yes. Same it, thing about Marcus Davenport, man, the other guy. We're drafting dudes that produce – and they steadily keep getting better, and they're coachable. And in this, obviously, I'm seeing a theme, the, seeing a theme bro. He's, he's competent. He completed his career, uh, first team All Conference Junior campaign, starting all 13 games, covering 1171 yards and 13 times, uh, scoring three 13 touchdowns on 59 catches. So imagine that the guy averaged 52 uh, t- uh, catches his first year. He came back and uh, put up, what was it, um, another 50-catch season, and then he had 59 in his final year. So, I mean, this kid. This, this Constantly kid. kept improving with the yards, too, and he got one more touchdown from the first year, 100 extra yards into his second, and then his third year he exploded. So, it's uh, I mean, to me, that's what you want to see, a guy that consistently gets better as opposed to somebody who had a big season in their rookie year and tailed off. Right. The Saints take them in the third round, uh, pick number 27. So let's, uh, let's imply, let's uh, move forward on this and project where he would fall in the depth roster. Okay. What traits? Cause I know, uh, that he has the, he has pretty good speeds, four, four, nine. Uh, he's pretty athletic. Now, like I said, there is Cam Ryan Meredith. There is uh, Brandon Coleman. There is now Traquan Smith. Obviously, when you take a guy in the third round, he's going to be fighting in that four or five receiver span. I don't think Cam Ryan Meredith uh, is, 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 is going to be a guy that's going to play anything less than your third receiver spot. That's obvious to me, you know, but I like the theme here with the Saints getting these big receivers that can catch and run. They have, they definitely upgraded right. the athletic ability of the wide receiver core, no doubt about it. Gave Drew Brees another weapon. I don't know if Traquan Smith has uh, any uh, what is it any help that he can lend in the, the special teams game. But let's let's no. let's 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 thing out here and look at it. Well, the few minutes we have left in this segment, 
and talk about what impacts he will have to the wide receiver depth chart. Where do we see him? Where will we place Mr. Traquan Smith? A third round pick, by the way, of the New Orleans Saints um, in this in our, in just, our current depth chart. I, I touched on it with my uh, with my introduction of describing him, and I see him as uh, not really Tay Gans' replacement, but I see him as maybe a three four guy. Meaning, um, you know, the Saints were all about personnel packages. He's a guy that can block. So, okay, if you're potentially having uh, a lot of runs going on or you're confusing the team out of a four-receiver or a three-receiver set, you might not have Tay again out there. Um, um, if Tay again just returned a punt on first down and you want to go three receivers, he's probably your guy. Uh, Meredith, to me, is definitely our number two. If things don't pan out and he's still slow from injury, which I think uh, Trey Quan is an insurance policy as well, if Meredith takes a little longer time than we're expecting, you're still set at receiver. You have Trey Quan, uh, Brandon Coleman, and Tay Ginn, and you know what Tay Ginn can do. So I think it just gives us flexibility to be able to move things around and switch our personnel package up depending on what type of game plan we have. Um, and the Saints are, are masters at that. I mean, you got a Robert Meacham role you need to fill. You got a Devin, Devin Henderson role you need. You need a Lance Moore type guy. And then you need a Marcus Colston type guy if you want to go with the prototype for what we've always did that was successful. And you have a Jeremy Shockey or some type of tight end that can give you uh, 500, five touchdowns or so. So I think with everything we got in addition to this guy, he makes us complete uh, with our roles, along with our two running backs. We've always had a two or three running back system. So as an offense, um, we're basically complete uh, with all our skilled players. We don't need anything else. Well, there he is. There it is. About Traquan Smith, man. Welcome aboard, my friend. Welcome to New Orleans, Traquan Smith. Uh, named all ACC in 2017, came in third all time in receiving yards, 2,748 yards, and 22 touchdowns at the University of Central Florida. So, big move for the Saints, get another weapon for the Saints, for, for the offense, for Drew Brees. And they added a defensive player that, that go with Cam uh, yesterday. And of course, we're going to cover day three, the final day. With the Saints having five remaining picks, it's going to be a busy day. But the sports coma will cover it after the draft. So we got two burners, baby. Tay again and not Trey Quan, man. What they going to do with us, bro? Nothing much, man. We got to keep pushing. But anyway, thank you for joining us on the sports coma quick segment. Be checking for us for day three. Peace. <laughs>